Meet the big baddie of the high seas. Aircraft carriers are often described as one of the greatest military assets a country can have. But what makes an aircraft carrier so formidable? And how does this massive floating runway even work? In this video, we break down the most chaotic and dangerous military bases in the world. Manned by thousands of sailors, these giant military machines provide a mobile base for special military planes. On top of the aircraft carrier is a long, flat runway called a flight deck. It is this runway where planes take off and land just like they do at any airport on land. But unlike land, where ground space is unlimited, on a ship carrier, there is only limited space for aircraft to work with. That's where things get a little, well, technical. Remember, for a plane to take off, it needs a momentum level of speed and acceleration. And to speed things up, carriers are equipped with powerful catapults on the deck floor. It is these catapults that provide the big push planes need to take off. Traditionally, catapults were powered by massive steam engines under the ship's deck. In older carriers, four steam-powered catapults were used to thrust 48,000-pound aircraft 300 feet from 0 to 165 miles per hour in just two seconds. In fact, did you know the flight deck crew can launch two and land one aircraft every 37 seconds? But thanks to major strides in technology, new carriers use a more efficient system of delivering energy, such as the mighty U.S. Gerald R. Ford, the biggest aircraft carrier in the world, which uses an electromagnetic launch system to launch aircraft by means of a new kind of catapult that uses a linear induction motor rather than the conventional steam piston. Compared to the traditional steam catapult, this new e system also weighs less, costs less, and needs a lot less maintenance. But what about planes that need to land? As if landing an aircraft on good old ground wasn't scary enough, landing at sea is just a whole different ballgame. Thankfully, planes are fitted with retractable hooks that attach to wires on the deck. On each plane's nose gear, there is also a T-bar that locks into the catapult shuttle, pulling the plane down. When the plane comes back, these arresting cables are used to help the plane slow down. And when a pilot is ready to land on the carrier, they approach the deck just above the arresting cables, hoping to catch one of these cables with the tail hook. As soon as the plane touches down on the deck, the pilot lowers the tail hook. If all goes well, the tail hook catches one of the arresting cables. The cable absorbs the plane's forward momentum and starts to decelerate rapidly, allowing the plane to land safely. After the cable catches the tail hook, it is retracted into a system below the deck and the tail hook is released. This process is usually automated, but it can also be manually controlled in case of emergency. And while this chaotic, fast-track runway is super fascinating and all, it's below the deck that the real magic happens. Beneath the deck, there are equally massive hangar bays where the aircraft are stored when they're not flying or on a mission. This is where planes refuel and repair before takeoff. Inside the hangar, you'll also find weapons and lifts you need to move weapons from storage sites to the aircraft. For this purpose, Four deck edge elevators are used to lift two aircraft from the cavernous hangar deck to the four and a half acre flight deck in just a matter of seconds. This quick turnaround time is essential for maintaining a high tempo during military missions. So by now, you can probably imagine there's a method to this madness. Remember, operating a floating airport requires a big crew to make sure everything works smoothly. A carrier like the U.S. Gerald Ford has a crew of more than 5,000. From sailors and pilots to mechanics and engineers who work in sync to keep things rolling. Each crew member has a specific role, from maintaining aircraft to cooking meals, managing communications, and providing medical care. During wartime, aircraft carriers are used for military missions, helping countries project their naval power. Carriers are used to provide relief during natural disasters, like earthquakes and floods in other parts of the world. Navigating vast oceans, these giant military machines are truly one of a kind. And even though the largest carrier belongs to the U.S. Army, other countries have put on quite the show. 
As of September 2023, there are 47 active aircraft carriers in the world operated by 14 navies. In fact, did you know five of the world's 10 biggest aircraft carriers by displacement are operated by Asian naval forces? Ever since World War II, aircraft carriers have been seen as important strategic assets. One of its greatest advantages is by sailing in international waters, they don't interfere with any country's territorial sovereignty. This minimizes the need for overflight authorizations from third-party countries, making journeys quicker and smoother. But hey, not every country can afford this mother of all ships. Remember, building and operating an aircraft carrier is no easy feat. Countries like China, Russia, France, and now India have now built their own formidable carriers. But with 11 aircraft carriers, the U.S. still boasts the highest number of carriers of any naval force in the world. Carrying a full load displacement of 100,000 tons, the Gerald Ford is currently the world's biggest aircraft carrier. With a built-in capacity to carry more than 75 aircraft and 4,539 personnel, the Ford uses advanced arresting gear and nuclear power, helping the U.S. project its military power abroad. It is also the only carrier in the world powered by two A1B nuclear reactors. With a whopping 250% more electrical power than its predecessor, the U.S. Nimitz class. So by now, you're probably wondering, what's life really like inside this massive ship? Sailors are often posted on long deployments, have to live in close quarters or shared berths, and most work odd hours in rotating shifts in a ship that's pretty much always on the move. Life on an aircraft carrier is surely challenging thanks to its unique operational nature and confined living space. Thankfully, several recreational activities are available to help the crew unwind. From libraries and gyms to movie nights and the occasional dip in the ocean, we gotta admit, Living inside this city on the sea is one of the most fascinating experiences you can ever have. If you've enjoyed getting to know this mighty vessel of the sea up close, make sure to hit subscribe so you never miss out.